Coming to you from the greatest city in the world, this is the number one showbiz podcast. It's Talk for Two. Here's your host, Matt Bailey. Thank you, Gary. And thanks to our season sponsors, Axtel Expressions and the Tangent Bound Network. Today, we have a true theater legend. Mr. Len Carew sat down with me to discuss his show, Broadway and the Bard, which runs through this Sunday, March 6th, 2016, at the Lion Theater in Theater Row in Times Square. And if you're finding this interview after this weekend and you like what you hear about the show, don't worry. Mr. Carew hopes to tour the show around the country very soon. The night before our conversation, I had a chance to see the show, and I got to tell you, I believe Mr. Carew's effortless blend of classic musical numbers and Shakespearean soliloquies, which are paired together, points to why both Broadway and The Bard, the name of the show, are timeless. In fact, I believe it so much, I told him this personally when we sat down in his dressing room. We also discuss his Tony-winning role opposite Angela Lansbury as the title character in Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Plus, he shares his thoughts on finding television fame with the CBS international smash hit, Blue Bloods. Here now to tell us why these classics of theater endure, our interview with Len Carew. Hi everyone, Matt Bailey here in Theater Row in the basement in Mr. Len Carew's dressing room. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is awesome. Now, I saw this show last night, the Broadway Broadway and the Bard, uh, and it's running through this week, uh, running one more week here at the Lion Theater in Theater Row. Uh, again, that's this Sunday. Tell us a little bit about how this show came to be, the concept. Well, it's something that I've been thinking about for years and years and years, really, and, uh, and I, I, when I made my Broadway debut, I, I was in Henry V, uh, in the fall of 1969, and six months later, I made my musical comedy debut mm-hmm. in applause and got the idea then to put together an evening of Shakespeare and song, because I'd just done both. And uh, and then, you know, life gets in the way, and you get work, and you get lost, and you think about it over the years, and you think you start, and then you think, oh, no, never mind, I'm not going to do that now. Until finally, when uh, when I got to be doing Blue Bloods and working here regularly and uh, and at home for well for the last six years anyway, um, I, I started to think about it because I was missing singing. I hadn't sung you know in a, in a show or uh, or done a uh, any singing really whatsoever in several years, and so I went back to my singing teacher and I started to get back in shape and. Uh, then I thought, okay, I'm going to do this now, and I, and, you know, again, it took me six years to do it, <laughs> um, maybe three, maybe three, when I finally just said, okay, get off the pot here, and uh, and realize this thing that you've been thinking about for all of these decades, and uh, that's how it really started. I, I then um, worked with Mark Janis, who is my musical director, and and uh, and then we. And, Invited uh, Barry Kleinbord to to come aboard because he's he's an encyclopedia of, of musical theater in America and a composer in his own right and Mark is a composer in his own right so I was in pretty good hands I chose most of these I chose all of the soliloquies pretty much and uh, uh, and and some of the tunes but Barry was a huge help to me in in uh, choosing material and we wanted to make sure that that you would be surprised by what we did and it was lovely and it was a lovely surprise <laughs> now I want to go back to something you said you did from the time you decided to do it to it coming up was, was about six years was there one specific thing stopping you was it a creative decision one specific thing uh, a hurdle that was a little tough to get no I just was procrastinating all over the place <laughs> and, and uh, you know I thought well it, I realized that it's going to take a lot of work, and uh, you know, life got in the way. Of the family things happened, and and when you think, okay, in, in our hiatus from Blue Bloods, I'll I'll really get at it. But uh, that's the summertime, and people are you know wandering off, and uh, you of course want to go and visit your family and have a vacation, and one thing led to another, and you. 
all of a sudden you're back at work and you haven't done what you, you know, said you were going to do. So, Really, and this was my impression after seeing it, I think what you've done with this show is, is you have pointed to why Shakespeare and why musical theater will always be timeless because you've blended them together so effortlessly. Can you talk to the process? You picked all the Shakespeare soliloquies. Was, mm. was there anything that was hard to match up, or maybe something that was easy? Uh, well, I think the opening was easy. The opening of doing Once More Onto the Breach, and then from Man the Fifth into Applause, that was kind of kicking me in the face. That was actually where I got the, the original idea. Um, that was pretty easy. Um, after uh, after the uh, uh, Mark Anthony soliloquy, um, we picked songs that were chunks of songs, mm -hmm. uh, three different songs, uh, and uh, and that was I think we didn't quite know what to do with that. We were kicking around uh, tunes, and then Barry finally came up with. Uh, with what we came up with, so uh, that was probably the toughest one. Now, is there a pairing that you guys worked on that didn't make it into the final 70-80 minute show that, that is kind of um, killing you that you're not doing up there? Not really, no. Uh, we, well, I pro there probably was, but I forgot what it was at this <laughs> point. And I don't want to think about it now. <laughs> <laughs> understood, understood. So let's move on to some other career highlights. Now, Sweeney Todd and, of course, uh, uh, Little Night Music, you worked with Stephen Sondheim and Hal Prince. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about working with those two legends? Well, yeah, they're, you know, they're the guys, they're the A players. Um, at that point in their lives, uh, I got them, you know, when they were really flying. Uh, at the time that Stephen was writing one best musical of the year after the next best musical of the year, just and they all kept getting better, starting with Company, Follies, Night Music, yeah, yeah. Sweeney now, Todd, you know, and, and the guy's a genius, and, uh, and Mr. Prince has always been an innovator and has always wanted to shake the tree and, you know, and find, find new ways to express musical comedy, and uh, he certainly did, I think, in, in both those instances of mine, anyway. How did he approach you about something? Well, it was after night music, so it was kind of, it was a, a phone call and he said, oh, and by the way, Stephen has written a musical for you. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, and he sent it to me without any lyrics in it, just the book. And Hugh Wheeler had done the book, uh, and he had also done the book for night music. And I read the book and I thought, these guys are out of their minds. This house is ridiculous. Uh, Jacobean drama, and you make it into a. The guy's a mass murderer, for God's sake. But then I reread it the second time, and I thought, well, you know what? If, it, if it's really a romantic score, it might work. And, you know, the rest was his, his history. It well, was, it worked. Best <laughs> musical, best lead actor, best lead actress for Angela Lansbury, who you then worked with. On murder, she wrote. Yeah. So some wonderful relationships there. As yeah. Part of yeah, that. Yeah, lifelong. True. Can you remember? Take us to the moment you won that Tony. Well, it was uh, it was uh, it was kind of funny because I was dating Glenn Close at the time, mm -hmm. and we were sitting in the audience, and I got picked, right, and she was with me, <laughs> and I got up onto the, onto the stage, and some idiot in the in the in the in the wagon said puts up a picture of Glenn Post, Mrs. Len Carrier. <laughs> so I, uh, and I of course don't know this, and neither does she, and you know, we, we go off after it's over, and I call home. <laughs> and my sister said, when did you get married? <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, they put your Mrs. Glenn, Len Carrier on the screen in front of Glenn Close. I said, oh, Lord God. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I'll tell you this real quick. I, I was looking up on IMDb Pro, mm -hmm. and she comes up, and underneath, I, go if you do this, if you have IMDb Pro, it says, Mrs. Lane Carey, under her name. I swear to God. Well, you see, that idiot didn't do his homework either. <laughs> um, IMDb Pro. Yeah, that's... 
It's just fine that you bring that up because I was wondering why that was there. Now let's let's dig in some more. Um, I want to cover Blue Bloods at the end. Um, let's dig in some more to this show. You, um, if there. Now, I wonder if you thought about this, but is there a contemporary musical that you would love, a song from a contemporary musical that you would love to pair with a Shakespearean song? I'm not really that hip on the on the uh, the latest musicals, so I really don't know. How to, I wouldn't have a clue. Mm -hmm. Barry probably would, but uh, I, I I don't know them well enough. You do so well with, with the classics; it's it's wonderful. And um, now you want to tour this show. You want to tour the show. I think it's something I create. It's a piece of theater. I think that it can be moved pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, it's not complicated. It's you know, piano and a small set and a few props and that's about it. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that uh, it would be nice to be able to do it in major cities in the country and maybe even in Europe. Um, English-speaking countries in Europe. Oh, they'd love that. Oh, I wonder. It. I hope so. Because of course, you know, with, the, with Blue Bloods, now it's all over the world. So. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you have an audience there that's, uh, that I think would go, who knew? Well, I, I guarantee you there's still a theater audience, even in our generation, that knows you and knows your work and, and loves your work. I told Hirsch, Hirsch is a, a theater director, and I said, we're going to go, we're going to go interview Lynn Carrier. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and um, since you bring up Blue Bloods, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. you surprised by the success? No. I knew it was going to be successful. From the get go, just you know, just hit you. Yeah, it's right. Uh, uh, I probably was. Um, I probably was the only one, but I, I knew it. I knew it as well as I knew Sweeney Todd would be. Yeah. The the piece it was and night music, just uh, and applause for that matter. Um, I always knew that they would be a hit. So it's almost like this this sense that well. You yeah, you get it. You know, you look. The material is really strong, and you've got wonderful talent around you, and uh, uh, wonderful directors, and uh, and really strong producers uh, that that really believe in the material, and so all that really shores up. And you you walk into the room, and you think, well, you know, we've got something really fine here. Let's not screw it up, yeah. and. Uh, Again, because you're with these real pros, it's not going to happen. And you know, it's very, it's very much like Blue Bloods. Uh, Tom Selleck has been doing this all his life, pretty yeah. much. Um, and he is, uh, you know, he's the he's the rock of Gibraltar there, and uh, he knows the medium inside and out. He's a pretty good writer in his own right. Uh, he's been, you know, behind the camera for forever. Uh -huh. and uh, knows how to work with writers um, and he's really been a, a, a solid solid rock of a guy there and I think he loves doing the show so I think as long as he wants to do it they'll do it. I have to tell you I grew up in a law enforcement family and that's why really? I love the show. Um, so I see a lot of the dynamic there, mm -hmm. the personal experience. You guys seem like you are a family, even on screen. Seems like it's got Yeah, we, we, you know, what was really interesting was the first, we went to Toronto to make the pilot, shot it in Toronto, the interior. Um, and, uh, because it was talk of maybe filming it up there. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, uh, the first scene that we filmed was the family dinner. Mm. The first day of shooting. Wow. And, I looked at Tom and I said, why are we doing this? We don't know one another. I mean, and I said to Leonard Goldberg, who was the executive producer and whose idea this was, he said, in every episode of this show, there will be a family dinner. And I said, why are we starting with that? We don't even know one another. And he said, well, you know, you've got the kids, and you've got some time with them. And, and he said, and anyway, I thought, throw them into the water, you know, and see if sink or swim. So we had to make up a backstory. While we were while the guys were lighting it, we were sitting around going, Well I wonder, you know, what I used I used to be the 
the, the PC, and so I was a detective then too, and I go yeah. back, and I was a cop, a beat cop. Uh, I was a vet, I was a war vet of the Marine, just like my son became, and you know, we made up a backstory. And actors are wonderful creatures, and uh, we all just looked at one another and said, well, it says we're a family, we better be one. So boom, there we were, and uh, it worked like that. And when that happened, I thought, well, this thing is going to really fly. It took a while to fly, but it was, uh, took us about three seasons before everybody went, this thing's really good. And so even in our sixth season, we're getting more of an audience than we ever had. And it's, you know, again, it's worldwide, so, so you can't walk around anywhere without people going, oh, commissioner. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Last question I have for it. This is a bit of a hard-hitting question, a little, little tougher. Um, but again, coming from a law enforcement family, I want to ask this. I, um, with everything about police, not just NYPD, but police, the show endures. Why do you think that is? Is what? The show endures. The show is loved despite yeah. the controversy about police departments around the country. What do you think is so enduring about the show? I think, I think the family aspect, the fact that you're able to know yeah. what they do, you know, in in their spare time, if you will, is that, and I think the most, the most enduring thing is the family dinner. That everybody says, "I love having that Sunday dinner with you guys," because everybody either either did that at one point in their life, or uh, you know, or they uh, or they wish they had. Wonderful. Well, uh, last question um, about the show, yeah, and this is. Um, where, other than New York, would you really like to perform Broadway in the park? Um, Chicago, Boston, Toronto, because I'm a Canadian, um, uh, LA, uh, San Francisco, um, you know, I like that. Go to the major cities and, and, and uh, sit down for a week, even though, you know, if, that's all, not, not a long time. Well, wonderful. we got a week left here through March 6th right here at Theater Row in the Lion Theater. I'm Matt Bailey with Len Cariou. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. Thank you again to Mr. Cariou. I wish you much success in this last week and wherever Broadway and the Bard takes you next. Visit telecharge.com or the Theater Row box office to purchase tickets. Also, thanks to Hirsch Ellis, my location producer. That's it for us this week. Thank you again to our season sponsors, Axtill Expressions and the Tangent Bound Network. Stay tuned to talkfor2.com on Twitter and Facebook for more. Reach out by emailing talkfor2cast at gmail.com and talk about us using hashtag talkfor2. Don't forget to check out our new Amazon guest shop, which features select works from many of our guests. You can get to that from our website homepage. Signing off for Talk for Two, I'm Matt Bailey, reminding everyone out there to keep talking for two. You can hear more show business interviews with the stars at talkfor2.com, where you'll also find one-of-a-kind products to improve your own show. That's talk, the number four, T-W-O.com.